Kentucky Derby 149 is almost upon us, and it's always an exciting time for racing. And the best way to play the Derby and play all the races is to play through Naira Betts. If you're not a member of Naira Betts, head on over to NairaBets.com. Use the promo code Derby25, and we'll have that $200 deposit match bonus along with a free $25 bet for the Kentucky Derby available through this weekend's Kentucky Derby. Well, it's almost upon us. And it is one of the most exciting races all year. And this is an interesting field. There are no superstars as of now in here. It's a fairly evenly matched field. And it feels like the kind of race to keep an open mind, have a few ideas on horses, and maybe look for the horses that are going to be the best prices, the ones that you think can win. Now, a lot of people feel that Forte should be a very heavy favorite in this race. I am not one of them, but it is very hard to knock Forte. He's been exceptional all throughout his career. He has the one blemish, a race he learned from. Otherwise, he has been perfect in all of his races. He got a terrific ride by Irad Ortiz. He let Mage make that early move. And keep in mind, Cyclone Mischief considered an also eligible now. Mage made the first move. Irad weighed in the turn, swung out in the stretch, and caught him late. There's nothing wrong with Forte. He's run well in all of his races. But I'm going to tell you why I'm going to pick against him. I don't think his best race was his last race. I don't like the fact that he had to be ridden hard the entire way. For most of his races, he's been a relatively push-button horse, a horse that found his spot under a little urging from Irad Ortiz, and then he rode him when he needed to. But in this Florida Derby, he was ridden along the entire way, and I don't even necessarily think he ran the best race. Mage got left in there. Mage made an earlier move, a wider move, while he waited, and he got the job done. But I don't want to bet a horse as the favorite. Now, I don't think he's going to be much below 4-1, to one, if at all, which some of you may find a fair price. And if you think that's a fair price, you should bet him. I think that Mage ran the better race. My problem with Mage is he's making his fourth career start, and I just feel like he's being rushed along into this derby. And while I think he's extremely talented and good enough to win this race, I'm worried that he's gotten left in both of his last two races, and he can't get left in this derby. And I just feel like his lack of seasoning is likely to catch up to him in the derby, as it always seems to with horses this likely raced. Am I going to be surprised if Forte wins this race? No, not at all. But he's not going to win with my money at a relatively short price off a of prep that I don't think was the best race he's run by any measure. I thought his race in the Fountain of Youth was just a better effort. His stablemate, Tappa Trice, I do prefer in this race. And Tappa Trice <clears throat> is another tricky horse to ride, and he's a horse that Luis Saez has to work hard and ride the whole way, and that worries me a little bit in the Derby. He ran well. He's going to have no problem with the Derby. I thought the Bluegrass might have been the most impressive of the preps. It got a 99 buyer, and I thought both he and Verifying ran extremely well. And I do think there's an argument that Verifying, who was close to a pace that collapsed and went toe-to-toe -to -toe all the way down the stretch was Tappa Trice, might have run the better race. Now, there's no doubt that Tappa Trice is a, more, a horse that's more suited to the 10 furlongs of the Derby than Verifying. And I do worry that Verifying may top out at a mile to a mile to an eighth. However, verifying is going to be four times the price that Tappa Trice is. So I think that makes him bettable in here. And I do think that both of these horses are players. A horse that is definitely a player on talent is the Japanese horse, Derma Sotagaki. And we'll look him absolutely <coughs> crushing his other Japanese rival, Continuar, in the UAE Derby. And this was a tour de force by a very, very good horse. And there's an argument from a speed figure standpoint that he absolutely has run the fastest race that anybody has run in this Kentucky Derby. Having said that, the performances of horses that came out of the UAE Derby have been subpar in past years. He's also a horse that needs to be forward, and I think this pace is going to be very honest. I think the Dermis Sotagaki <clears throat> might be the most talented horse in the race, and if he were 12 to 15 to 1, I wouldn't have an argument with betting him in here. But I think in all likelihood, he's going to be more like the 6 to 8 to 1 range, and I don't think that's any kind of value on a horse that's really trying to buck a very tough trend coming from Dubai in six weeks. Japan to Dubai, Dubai back to America to get ready for this race. This may be the hardest race in the world to win. And to come into it off a somewhat of a difficult schedule makes it harder. I am a fan of this horse's talent, but I'm not necessarily a fan of his chances unless his price is good enough. And I'd need at least 12 to 1 to bet on Derma Sotagaki in this year's Kentucky Derby. Let's take a look at a horse who could absolutely win the Derby, and that's Angel of Empire. And we'll see him easily beating Reincarnate and Rocket Can in the Arkansas Derby. What I don't like is the figure of 94 isn't fast enough to win. 
What I do like is he's taken steps forward in all of his three races from a figure standpoint. And he is also not a horse that is winning races that are collapsing. Yes, he got a good pace in the Risen Star, but he still ran well that day. And I think the Risen Star was a very good race. It might be better than that 89 buyer. And we'll get to that in a moment. And his Arkansas Derby, he made a sustained half a mile run and he kept on running. And I think that's a very important talent for the Kentucky Derby because the Derby is not a race that's usually won in the last eighth of a mile unless you get a complete meltdown. For the most part, you want horses that are at least relatively close to contention top of the stretch. And I think that Angel of Empire fits that bill. He can make that move around the turn and put himself there. The question is, is he fast enough? And the question is whether or not you think his price is commensurate. If you think his price is good enough, he's a horse that I left out of my top four. He's my fifth pick. I won't be shocked if he wins. Listen, I won't be shocked if my 12th pick wins this race. It's that kind of open race. But I do think Angel of Empire is a very dangerous player. Let's take a look at the California horses, horses that I have left out of my top four, but I do respect them. Practical move has run well in his races. He puts himself in position. He fights on near the front end. The paces are honest, and he fights down the stretch. I have no knock on him other than to say I don't know if he's going to get better with more distance. And also, I'm not convinced of the overall talent of these horses, even though they've gotten figures that are as fast, if not faster, than anybody else in the race. Skinner seems like an interesting proposition for trainer John Sheriffs. And if you like Skinner, you have to kind of hope that he sits back farther, the pace is faster, and he can make that final run a little bit later in his races. Because the reality of Skinner is, if you look at his last two races, both the San Felipe and the Santa Anita Derby, he made what looks like winning moves only to sort of hang in the late stages. And he strikes me as a horse that's better a mile to maybe a mile and eighth, but probably even a mile. And I wonder if even though he's a closer, the mile and a quarter may be too far for him. His best chance is to make that one big latish run as opposed to grinding it out like he's been trying to do in the other races. I do think he's talented, but I wonder about 10 furlongs. And I also wonder about 10 furlongs with practical move. But once again, if practical move is 12 to one in here and you want to bet him, I wouldn't knock you. There's nobody in this race that looks so definitively good that you shouldn't be willing to keep an open mind if the price on horses that you think are your third or fourth choice are much higher than you expected them to be. Let's take a look at the Wood Memorial. And listen, I'm rooting for the Wood Memorial horse to do well. Now, the one, two finishers in last year's Wood Memorial accounted for two legs of the Triple Crown, but not the Kentucky Derby, though only one of them ran the Kentucky Derby. And I don't want to lock Lord Miles. Listen. He ran well to win this race. Who knows? Maybe he's got another step forward, but I don't know what you do with a one-number horse. I do think that Hit Show is dangerous in here because Hit Show drew the outside post last time. They had to ride him to be in the race and be closer than was in his best interest, and he still finished, and he still ran respectively well. Drawing the rail in this race, he's not going to be used early. He's going to drop back and get to make that later run that he can be more effective doing. I don't worry that much about drawing the rail. First of all, with the new gate, it isn't the disadvantage it was in the past. But also, because Hit Show lacks speed, I don't think it matters that much. He's going to drop back a little bit, and he's not going to lose ground. So I do think he's a possible player and a horse that around 20 to 1 is usable in this race. And let's face it, I am rooting for the Wood Memorial horse to do well. It pains me to hear the great Wood Memorial get disparaged unfairly, and Hit Show is a horse that has a chance. And if the price is right, I think he's usable. The horse I like in this year's Kentucky Derby is two fills. We'll take a look at the JR Stakes, the Jeff Ruby Stakes, last time out when he ran the fastest buyer figure that anybody comes in this race. So why isn't he favored? Well, it was synthetic, and I wish it had been dirt. I can't totally trust him off a synthetic win, but the good thing for two fills is he has good dirt form, and he's another horse that was improving with every race, and I really liked his Risen Star because the Risen Star was a race that fell apart, and he was the horse that broke the race open, making the first real move into the pace. And I thought his effort was very respectable behind Angel of Empire. In fact, I don't really think he ran much worse than Angel of Empire did in victory, very, very close, and hopefully he'll be a better price. And he ran big last time. Was it the synthetic that moved him forward? I don't know. His trainer, Larry Ravelli, has excellent numbers going synthetic to dirt. 
So he can make those moves and he can make them successfully. And two fills is a horse that I have an affinity for. He has the speed to put himself in position, but he doesn't need to be in front. And I think the two fills has a very, very good chance in this year's Kentucky Derby. And if he ends up being a square enough price, my money will be in. Let's take a look at the Louisiana Derby, a race that I did not like. Kings Barnes, the, the third of the Todd Pletcher horses. He does not have the speed to dominate in the front end the way he did at fairgrounds, where he set a very, very slow pace. He also rode a rail that was extremely strong, a rail that Disarm rode as well, and that's why Disarm got dressed up enough for a lot of people to be falling for him for what reasons I don't know. I also just don't think that Jace's road is good enough to win this race. At best, he's a pace casualty. Kings Barnes, he's three for three. So listen, maybe he's a horse that'll be four for four after the Derby, but like Mage, he comes in here with insufficient seasoning, and I think Mage is a better horse than he is, and to me, Kings Barnes is a horse that is dressed up by a dream trip in the Louisiana Derby. Finally, let's look at the Rebel, a race that Reincarnate actually ran well in with trouble, but I thought he got a little bit exposed in the Arkansas Derby, and while he didn't run badly, he didn't run well enough to win this race. I don't think he's good enough to wire the field. I do think that Confidence Game is a very talented horse. And if Confidence Game had gone on and run in another prep race after the Rebel and run well, he might very well be my pick in this year's Kentucky Derby. But a horse that got completely knocked out by a race that was run two and a half months ago and wasn't even able to complete in any prep, now coming in the Derby off two and a half months, that is not the way I want to see a horse go in the Derby. Now, his Rebel was excellent. He made the first move into a race that collapsed, and he continued onward. Don't knock confidence game. He is very, very good, but I do not like the way he is coming into this race. I wish he had another prep. In fact, what do I wish? I wish they ran the Lexington and waited for the Preakness, and I think he could have been the Preakness winner, just like his trainer Keith DeSormo did a few years back with Exaggerator. A good horse, but not the way you want a horse to go into the Derby. This year's Derby is as wide open as any Kentucky Derby I've ever witnessed, and I think you want to keep an open mind, and if some horse that you think is your third or fourth choice or even fifth choice is going off at twice the price that he should go off at, be ready to play that horse and key off them. But for me, I'm going to try to beat Forte the favorite in here. I put two fills on top. I think Tappet Trice is more likely than Verifying to win this race, but at a much bigger price, I put Verifying over Tappet Trice because I really like the bluegrass. And I've got Hit Show in for fourth. I think he's a long shot with a chance. And I am a little bit biased towards the Wood Memorial horses. Angel of Empire was my fifth choice as well. You could go on and on and on. This is a really fun Kentucky Derby 149. The best way to play it and all the races is to play through Naira Bets. Head on over to NairaBets.com. Use the promo code Derby25. We will match the $200 of your initial deposit and give you a free $25 bet on this year's Kentucky Derby. Best of luck.